Hey, everybody. Saul Marquez with the Outcomes Rocket. I want to welcome you back. Today, I have the privilege of hosting Jeffrey Roche on the podcast. He is the son of a nurse, a healthcare expert, diversity advocate, and education enthusiast. He is uh, serving as the Director of Workforce Development at Siemens Health and Ears and National Healthcare Practice Executive Advisor at Core Education. He speaks often on healthcare workforce topics at national conferences like Becker's, Hims, Five, and many others. I'm excited to have him here on the podcast to talk about a very hot topic, which is the workforce. Uh, so, so Jeffrey, thank you so much for, for being with us today. Thank you, Saul. It's wonderful to be here. Yeah. Um, all right. So look, we uh, we want to learn a little bit more about you before digging into the work that you guys are doing at Siemens. So what what is it that inspires your work in healthcare? Yeah. So really, the inspiration for my work in healthcare very much comes from, uh, you know, many ways, my mother. Uh, obviously, my mother was was a nurse, um, you know, very, very uh, proud nurse and, and uh, served as a labor and delivery nurse for many, many years. And I actually had the privilege then, you know, through through that inspiration to start my hospital administration career at the same hospital she had served for many years. And so it was really an interesting, uh, you know, opportunity. Uh, she was not there at that time anymore, but it was an interesting opportunity to come in and have a lot of people know, you know, know me as, oh, you're you're Gabi's son. Uh, I remember you when you were this little kid and now you're in this administrative role. And so um, and I would say, too, I had a field study when I was in college that also really helped me understand it was at a hospital system. And it really helped me understand the opportunities that a hospital career and really a healthcare career can have. Love it. Yeah, it's always been part of your life and, and sort of you just stuck with it. As we think about some of the biggest challenges that face our workforce in healthcare, it's shortages in staff, it's burnout. Uh, talk to us a little bit about how Siemens Health and Ears and the work that you do are adding value to the healthcare ecosystem on, on the workforce side. So, I mean, Saul, as you know, I mean, when you look across the entire ecosystem of healthcare, we're at a really interesting time when we think about workforce. We're dealing with record shortage in enrollment in majority of health sciences programs and other programs that ultimately can be beneficial to our workforce and healthcare. While we're also dealing with a lot of people leaving the workforce, whether through retirement or just leaving for other opportunities where they're burnt out or, or they've decided that it's time to move on. I think, um, you know, particularly what that calls for is for really innovative and intentional effort around where eds and meds can come together. And it really requires education, uh, healthcare, all the institutions within this work coming together and really coming together in an ecosystem fashion, working with workforce development boards, working with government, working with community-based organizations, working with schools, working with organizations that work with the youth. Because generally when people think of healthcare careers, they think of doctor or nurse. That's generally what a younger professional thinks about. And what we want them to really think about is a STEM approach, uh, because ultimately healthcare is a STEM-based career. It is. And so the opportunities are endless. If you like technology, there's opportunities. If you like to deal with patients, there's opportunities. If you want to be administrative, there's so many opportunities. And so we believe strongly that we have to really help people understand the opportunities. We have to show them the opportunities through in-person experiential learning. We have to use technology uh, through extended reality and such to help them see where they could be after a college degree or even before a college degree. And so that's really what we need to do. Help us understand how does uh, Siemens Health and Ears sort of play a role in this? What What is it that's being delivered or is it a product? Is it a service? Uh, and who are you helping? Yeah. So let me first just give the caveat that I that I don't speak for all of Siemens, but I but I can educate from the perspective of what I have the privilege to do at Siemens. Um, Siemens you. Health and Ears is 100 percent invested in supporting our hospital systems, uh, our partners in looking specifically at how we can help bolster workforce development. You know, I wouldn't necessarily say it's a product, but it's really a solution where okay. we, we can work in kind of an ecosystem fashion and harness the power of partnership. Um, how can we bring together uh, at a national level, at a state level, at a regional level, all the different entities that are critical to really looking at how we bring more interest into the healthcare careers? Uh, obviously, we're in the med tech space, right? But the reality of it is, is that the work that we do benefits every person in a healthcare ecosystem. 
And so, you know, certainly we have a, an invested interest um, to really help support all aspects of healthcare careers, but especially we need more imaging professionals. We need more biomed clinical engineers. We certainly need more individuals on the radiation oncology side. Um, and so, you know, we're, we're really at an interesting time and we have a lot of work to do. Got it. So it's really uh, helping health systems that you guys are partnered with to ramp up the talent that's needed to, to operationalize the technologies and, and help patients. Yeah, and also focus on bringing more people in from a pathways perspective, also help upskill existing. Retention, cool. recruitment, upskilling, really critical. Love it. Thank you for that. You know, I just was curious how the pieces fit together. And so what would you say uh, you guys are doing different or better than, than, than other folks in the space? Yeah, the difference here is that Siemens Health and Ears has really been invested in education and workforce solutions for, for quite a while. Okay. Uh, when you look at the impact that we've made across this country with various different hospitals and health systems, uh, many colleges and universities, many community colleges, we are just 100% invested in helping uh, and being a vital partner um, in STEM career exploration uh, for example, when we do our mobile MAMO screenings uh, across the country, some people will, you know, will see them. The big bus pulls up and obviously a lot of access to care is provided in partnership with a hospital system because we will never provide access to care from a screening and then not have that follow up if it's necessary. That's critical to us. Access to care means access to care. But we always include as part of those events too career exploration. We partner with churches and we partner with schools and we partner with other community-based organizations so that parents and children can learn about those careers. We believe very strongly in intentionality around these things. And so I think what makes us different is a supreme and passionate commitment to make a difference. That's awesome. I uh, had no idea you guys did that. And, um, and kudos, right? Because it's about the communities we serve and uh, helping everybody level up, not only their health through access, but but also careers and opportunities that maybe they otherwise would not have known about. Uh, so I think that's really, really uh, admirable uh, and big kudos to the to you and the company for doing that. Tell us about setbacks, you know, like as you guys have explored this this sort of pathway, what setbacks have you seen and what learnings have come out of them? Yeah, you know, I think um, obviously this work is is not easy and we have to remember that it takes time. When we're really talking about building a sustainable workforce and, and really a sustainable and healthy workforce in healthcare, it's not gonna be solved overnight. And so I wouldn't necessarily call it a setback, but I do think that generally we're at a time where, where we know the issue is really tough, but we also wanna solve it quickly. And we're not gonna always be in a position to solve it quickly. We're gonna have to really think hard and deep about how we build a more sustainable and healthy workforce. And that requires innovative partnerships. And obviously, as you know, when, you, when you're in this space, that can take time. Funding is, is always a, you know, an opportunity and a challenge on both a government level, uh, certainly on a philanthropic level. Um, we are going to seek to partner uh, with all those types of entities because we do believe this is an all hands on deck approach. And, you know, it really requires authentic, genuine partnership. And, um, and to your point about learning, this is an everyday learning process. We're learning about new opportunities. We're learning about new challenges. And what I always say is we have to be in an innovation think tank type of approach to look at everything and see if it can help move the needle. I love that. Yeah. Thank you for, for, for that, Jeffrey. And it's going to take time and uh, we all have to roll up our sleeves. When you think about best ways to solve problems, you know, we, we do what's humanly possible, but then there's technology to help us. Can you talk about maybe one healthcare trend or technology that's going to change workforce as we know it? Yeah, there's so many, right, um, that, that specifically come to mind. And obviously, there's a lot of focus, as, as I know you know right now, on AI. And, and um, the reality of it is, is that there's definitely going to be some aspects of AI that, that can certainly be a benefit. Uh, to the healthcare workforce. I do, though, from a workforce perspective, want to highlight that I think as time goes on, and we already are seeing this significant benefit, but as time goes on, we're going to see even more benefit to the use of extended reality, uh, particularly when we think about training our healthcare professionals, but also when we think about bringing people into understanding the benefits of a healthcare career. 
if you can imagine sitting in a middle school class, learning about, you know, science and anatomy and have the opportunity, whether you're putting a headset on uh, or using extended reality, you know, on a screen and literally see aspects of the body, be able to be in a position where you're getting to use your hands to understand how you could be that future technologist or you could be that future uh, clinical engineer. We'll be in a much stronger position when that's the type of learning that's occurring. That's great. And when you say extended reality, is it VR and AR? Or Yep, VR, AR, and certainly other aspects that wouldn't necessarily be characterized as AR or VR, but are, but are part of the, sort of that element of, of extended reality. Love it. Thanks for that. Uh, yeah, it's a huge opportunity and scalability, right, is a big factor when you, when you start doing extended reality options. So I love it, Jeffrey. I love the work that you're up to, the difference you guys are making. What closing thought would you leave our listeners with today? And uh, what's the best way for them to follow you and the work that you're doing? Yeah, the thought I would leave particularly with is, you know, we also have to really be thoughtful around creating a more equitable workforce in healthcare. And we have to really be intentional to ensure that our, our entire team and our caregivers and providers really look like the patients that they serve. And so again, we have to be very laser focused on those initiatives as well. And, and uh, you know, I'm blessed to be in an opportunity to do that. People can certainly follow me, uh, certainly on LinkedIn, uh, happy to connect at any time um, and really talk through these issues. And, and with true authenticity, uh, we're, we all have to be in this together and so happy to be a part of it. I love it, Jeffrey. Thanks again for jumping on the podcast with us. Uh, folks, let's not stop at listening, as I like to say. Take action on the ideas that Jeffrey left us with. What are you doing to increase access? What are you doing to lift up your community? What are you doing to provide equity in the workplace? Some great questions to ask and to take action on. Jeffrey, really appreciate you jumping on with us and uh, giving us the inspiration to do more. Absolutely. Thank you for having me.